Hello everyone and welcome to Simply Made Homestead. Now today we are back in the kitchen, but we are not going to be making any food. We are gonna be making soap. Um, I have ran out of soap, all but my charcoal soap that I make that I like to use for washing my face, but I love a lavender bar for bathing and I'm out. So I have got to, okay, I'm not completely out. I've got like a little tiny, that is just frustrating to try to bathe with. So we've got to make some soap today. Now, while our goats are in milk now, they are just brand new mamas. Babies are only three weeks old. We have not started milking our goats yet. So we're going to be taking the route of making soap without lye, which will be the pour and melt, and uh, or the melt and pour. <laughs> is what it's called. And right here, this is what we're going to be using. It is uh, goat's milk, which I love goat's milk. So this is what we have. I bought it from Bulk Apothecary. I'll put a link in the description box for you. But it's all natural. And I have made a lot of soap off of this. But as you can see here, it's already processed. So I just need to cut it off and weigh out how much I want. So we're gonna start there. I'm gonna set my scales to pounds. And I wanna try to do a double batch today because you're going through all of this and getting everything out and messing everything up, so why not, right? So I'm going to weigh out two pounds of the uh, melt and pour soap. And if you chuck, you can put it in the pot just like this, but if you cut it up, which I didn't do with these, if you cut it up, they do melt a lot faster. Now, even though we are going to make lavender soap today, you can make, there's lots of variations. You can, we're gonna be using dried lavender flowers, um, and then, but you can uh, change that out with chamomile or calendula, and then you could just do the same thing with your essential oils. Dried peppermint, you want something kind of Christmassy, something to help kind of, if you have a cold, but like whatever essential oils you want to add, then add, you can add some dried herbs and things like that that would go with it and just change it up and make it your own. Now there's one, my husband, <laughs> he likes some more manly <laughs> smelling soap than lavender. And there's one that we tested and came out really well. And uh, it was four different essential oils and they worked really well together. And I've got to find my notes because I don't know where they are. But once I do, I will gladly share that little combination with you as well. And we'll make some manly soap. Now, one of the big difference, well, for one thing, with the lye, when you use the uh, when you use like goat's milk, you need your goat's milk to be frozen and really cold and all to because of the process. But with this, this is a much quicker, faster. And if you don't have goat's milk or a source where you can purchase goat's milk. This is a really good alternative. Now, once I get my goat's milk, I will definitely be making soap that way from now on, which is just in time. You see how much of this I have left. But with the lye soap, you really have to let it sit up for a while before you can use it. And uh, with this, as soon as it dries, gets really good and dry, then it, it's ready to go. This is really a big batch. So, know <laughs> that you can't half this if you don't want to make as much. 
and what we're going to be using today, now if you have a double boiler, that's perfect. If you don't, I'm going to put a bowl over a pot with a little water in the pot, and that's going to be my double boiler for today. Oh, come on. We're like right at it. <laughs> there we go. Two pounds exactly. Now you see this tiny little pot. It's what I've got. So I'm using what I've got. And here's my bowl. Because what you want, you want, I'm going to put just a little bit of water, about an inch worth of water in the bottom of this pan. And you don't want the bowl to touch the water. So it has to be big enough, well, for, to hold all that, but you want it big enough where it'll hold up in the pot and it'll, it, so it won't touch. And I'm gonna put that in there and then I'm gonna turn it up and get that water boiling. And I will turn it down because we don't want it, we want it to get hot enough to uh, gently melt the soap, but we don't want it to, you know, all of our water to boil out, which is what'll happen. And this is a really big bowl of soap. So just starting out, you may definitely want to half the recipe, but once it melts, all those air pockets, there, there won't be any more, it'll be much lower once it starts melting. And I turned it up pretty high because I just really want it to get going quickly. But when you start, you should start hearing bubbles quick. And then you'll just start turning it down. And I like to take a peek. Okay. Yeah, I heard a little fizzle, but nothing actually going on down there yet. Now, while we're waiting, what we're going to need, we're going to need some measuring spoons. I'm using lavender, so we're going to use some lavender essential oils. Honey, raw local honey is always best. And then I'm using some dried uh, lavender. Now to the, all of these things that we'll be using today, I will leave links for you below in the description. So you can check them out there. And down there in the description, I will also uh, put some alternatives, some different uh, ingredients that you can use to make different kinds of soap. You know, it has been a while since I've made this soap, but I'm not convinced I doubled the recipe last time because this is an awful lot of <laughs> oh, soap base in here. But, honey, we're in it now, so we're going to go for it. Okay, now it's starting to heat up down there. Now, a couple other things that I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use this big measuring cup because it's much easier to pour it into the mold. So you'll need a soap mold or two, depending on how much soap you're making. I really need to break down and buy a double boiler. But once I start making soap with uh, real goat's milk, I won't need it. I won't need the double boiler anymore. All right, now that it's starting to melt a bit, I'm feeling a little bit better about my decision to double the recipe. Now, another thing that I use is one of these little molds right here, because if I have any excess soap, it's really nice. I pour, make little, little soaps, and they're perfect on the sink for to washing your hands. Now, another way that we can melt our uh, melt and pour soap is that we can take it, take my little lid out there, stick it in the microwave, and set it for about 30 seconds at a time. And I'm just giving you alternatives because some people like it better one way than the other. So we're going to do a little bit of each. Be sure and wear your mitts because it, it gets super, super hot. So after 30 seconds, you wanna take it out, stir it around, and I gotta admit, the, when I learned how to, this method and how to do this, um, 
I was taught by doing the double boiler and um, while it works great and I've made a bunch of soap that way, I think I do prefer the microwave a little better. But like I said, you have, there are two options and you can figure out which one works best for you. And you do want to, you see how, because it started melting, so it's kind of sticking together. You want to very carefully, y'all, you don't want to splash that hot soap on you. So, I mean, it's always, when making soap, I'm not wearing long sleeves today and I'm not dealing with lye, but even like this, when you're stirring it around and you splash it up on you, it's, it's a good idea to wear long sleeves. So with that said, stir very gently. Now guys, I also like to use a cookie sheet so that when I fill these up with uh, soap, it makes it super easy to move them around. When you're trying to, you see how flimsy this is? Yeah, so once you put them somewhere, if you're doing it just like this, they're not going anywhere. So just in case I have to move them, I like having the cookie sheet. Now, if you have a favorite soap that you like, I would love to hear about it, guys. If you could uh, just leave in the comment section below like what goes in it to give me some ideas for around the house. And, uh, you know, it's always... <laughs> There's, and for families, Christmas time, y'all. Yeah, make some fun soap for the family, for the kids. And especially with this uh, melt and pour, y'all, it's so easy and so quick. And you're, I mean, at first you're a little nervous and you're like, I, you know, what scents to put in and all like that but once you get going and you can read other blogs and people's ideas and what they use and add those things in there and just experiment do a small batch do a little experiment it is it really is a lot of fun you see it's a bit of a mess <laughs> to make but the good part of it is it's soap so it's easy to clean up I really think that should have done it. And it's steaming, but it wasn't boiling or anything like that. So that's really, really good. Yep. No more chunks. All right. All right. Now, this glass is cooler than this bowl. So I am going to pour my melted soap into there, which will help to cool it down. And you see, even with the double batch guys, the two, I've got exactly four cups. All right, so we are going to add four teaspoons of lavender, of the petals here. And four teaspoons is one tablespoon plus one teaspoon, since three teaspoons is one tablespoon. So four teaspoons of lavender. Now this essential oil, it's a big bottle and it's got a big dropper. So I know, ooh, I'm getting low. So we need to put about a hundred drops of of lavender in there. So that was about 20 with one full. So 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. And that may seem like an awful lot to y'all, but what you need to do is you start out with what, you know, start out with less than that and see how it does, see how it smells to you. And then, you know, then add more if you can. You can't take it away, but just start out with what you think. And then it's four teaspoons of honey, which I am just adding in there. I was eyeballing. Honey is really good for our skin. It's an antibacterial. It's good, good, good to have in your soap. 
Now, another thing my husband likes is instead of, like when I make his soap with the, the scents that I use, I'll use uh, oatmeal instead of like dried flowers. And because I personally like a little, a little something, something in my, um, in my soap. It gives you a little, a mild abrasion, especially when you work on a farm. <laughs> you need a little scrubby. Helps to, to get the skin nice and clean. All right, so we've got our tray there. We've got my soap. And then we'll just start pouring it. Just to go nice and slow, because you don't want to over pour, and then it leak out everywhere. And if the soap in your cup, I'm going to try to do this left-handed because I know I'm blocking y'all. The soap, you can see the soap in my cup, it's starting to harden a little bit. So I'll just stick it back into the microwave for just a few seconds, not a whole 30. Just a few seconds just to make sure I get it all. We don't want any of the goodness to, to get away from us. Nice and slow. You can see I've stirred it up. Got more lavender in some of them than others, but that's okay. All right, stick it in there for 10 seconds. I didn't use my little round thing, so hopefully I can get enough out. This is just gonna be a skinnier bar, but that's okay. This is something else you can do. There we go. We'll finish that out a little bit. And it is almost as fat as the other ones. Well, there you go. Homemade lavender goat's milk soap. Now, we're going to let this sit um, for at least eight hours. Let it sit and get really uh, dry and hard all the way through. And I leave it for 24 hours. Better safe than sorry. And uh, then you can remove it from the molds. And I just kind of layer mine in parchment paper or wax paper, whatever you have, and store it away and keep it that way. Um, you can create your own little wraps or um, some people will wrap them in parchment paper and put a little tag on them and gift them to people. Some people sell them. So you've got options, y'all, but one thing's for sure that I like them for best. I know what's in them. I know what's going on my skin. After all, your skin is your largest organ and uh, it deserves to be treated well. Once you get familiar with the uh, just making the soap and then you can start doing your research and you can, you can add things to it. You can add vitamin E, almond oil, olive oil. I mean, different scents. There are just tons of different things that you can do to create a soap specifically for you, for your skin, and one that just, I don't know, just makes you happy. Once you try it, guys, please be sure and leave it in the comments. Just let me know what you think. <laughs> the sky's the limit. Give it a try. You're going to love it. It beats store-bought stuff, hands down, no chemicals. It's amazing. Now, as far as the pour and melt soap is concerned, I am going to leave that link to Bulk Apothecary. We are not an affiliate at all. That's just where I got mine, and you can get a large amount for a good price. But you can find pour and melts on Amazon. You can pick them up at Hobby Lobby and Michael's. They uh, both carry them. So you do have those options if you want to try to get something super quick and uh, make something up for someone special for Christmas this year. All right, y'all, don't forget, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. I love to hear from you. And until next time, take care and God bless.